you want to get clients and you want to get clients who pay money for your services, your product, your business, your expertise. Am I right? I'm assuming I'm right. And so if this is the case, there's one key question I want you to ask yourself, which is, which one is you? Do you have a very full pipeline of clients? Uh, is your biggest problem, who, how do I serve all these clients? Or is your biggest problem, e, I want to get the right client for me. How do I find and convince the right client to choose me? Which one is your situation? My guess is it's the second option, meaning you're thinking, how can we get people to know about us? How can we get people to choose us over the competition? If you are an exception, please type in the Q&A um, as we go through this. And I'd love to know what your secret sauce is if you've got so many people coming and saying, I only want to work with you and you don't have to do any, anything. No marketing, no chase, nothing. So yeah, this is what this is about. I like to be fit for purpose. What does that mean? It means whenever I do something or train somebody to do something, it's all about what's the point, what's the end result that we want out of this. And the end result always, whether you are a government, a corporate person, a business person, is this. I have something to say. I want my ideal stakeholder. It could be a client. It could be somebody who's going to vote for you. It doesn't matter who it is. I want a yes from that person. That's really, if we break down everything and simplify it, you want a yes. That's what you want. Doesn't matter what position you're in, doesn't matter what your work or life situation is. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen and go through a bit of a presentation here. So imagine, imagine a potential client, your potential clients believe you will solve their problem. You, nobody else, you. What would that feel like? What would your life be like? How easy would it be for you to make money? So again, imagine your ideal client believes that you are the solution, you are the person, right? You are the company. What happens is that you move from chasing to choosing. So you're, instead of chase, chase, marketing spend, burning through money, being stressed and thinking, oh, how many do we have this month, next month? Choosing, people choosing to work with you is a very different situation. And this is what the purpose of this talk is all about, is how do you make that happen? I have a question for you. Are you brilliant at what you do? I hope I can see all your hands virtually going, yes, I am. Of course you're brilliant at what you do, right? You are brilliant. Okay, but you need clients, right? You're brilliant, you need clients. There are only two ways that you get clients. What are they? Either you go to them, or they come to you, that's it. There is no third option. You go to them or they come to you. If you go to them, what is that? The go to them mentality is, I have marketing spend, I have an ideal client, I need to reach them, I need to get lots of leads and I'm going to try to convert those leads into my ideal client. That is you going to them. And what that means is that you are always chasing, you're always on the back foot, and you are burning through money. You're burning through money because the way you want to get the eyeballs and people to know about you is that you're most likely spending on ads and marketing. Now, imagine instead of that, that people came and said, you, you are the solution to my problem. When people choose you, there's a very different equation that comes into play, which is this, it is, you are in the position of power, right? They come to you, which means that it is a conversation. It is, it is not uh, the chase, please choose me. This is a conversation between you and the ideal client. It gives you a much more powerful position to be in and you're not pitching and selling them. It's a very different thing. And I'll tell you something, it is a most magnificent feeling. Um, just an aside, why do I get to talk about this? I'll tell you why I get to talk about this generally, but very specifically, this issue of being chosen. I've been fortunate in that I've never applied for a job. The, those are some of the clients that I've worked with that Nadine referred to. And every one of those has been through them coming to me, through either a decision maker knowing about me, or a decision maker being told about me because they had a problem or an issue and they knew I can 
solve it. I am the solution to that issue. And that is why I get to talk about this because this is how I've lived my whole life. But this is really so powerful. And it takes a few steps to get there. And that's what we're gonna be running through today. And the end purpose of all this is that you want to be a person of influence, all right? So person of influence. This is a very specific thing. What does it mean? Okay, I always say to people, I teach you how to communicate with impact and influence. Impact is when you go, you say something, you do something, and people say, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to pay attention to you. But attention is fleeting. Attention, it can be there for a second and then gone. So the idea is, how do you keep them interested? But it cannot stop there. It's about how can you get them to do something with what you've just shared? Example, book a call with you, buy your products, whatever that thing is. It, you have influence when you influence people's decision-making process and their behavior, what they do next. That is the highest, really, achievement. Now, I'm going to be going over three steps. Number one is the foundation. And I'll take you through exactly what that is in just a minute. And just to share with you that this man, I'm sure you all know who this is, Warren Buffett, he calls this the, well, the, I call it the ultimate skill, but he says that this increases your net worth by at least 50%. What is it? Mm. So that first step is, what's the foundation? The second step is drilling down and defining two things. And the third one is be known, all right? So let's go to the beginning, the foundation. I call this a core skill. People call these soft skills. Oh, how to communicate, body language, how to be your presence. Oh, you can tell that I don't buy into that. This is a core skill, why? Because it is at the center, at the core of everything that you do and become, right? It's a core skill. It is at the core of how your life plays out. Do you get chosen or not? Do you get the yes or not? These are core skills. What are they? It's the skill that gets you the funding. It's a skill that means that you are chosen to deliver on a project. You are chosen for that next thing, whatever it is that you want for yourself. Here you go. It's you investing in communication skills, right? Investing in communication skills is so fundamental. I'm going to take you through uh, a couple of examples of what I've been exposed to by people at the top of their game, running companies, running countries, and the problems that they've had and what they mean to somebody like me who's had to go through answers that are not interesting, not relevant, boring. What do people like me then end up doing? Um, but before we do that, I'm going to share with you what this young man has to say about it, okay? If they just learn to communicate better, both in writing and in person, they increase their value at least 50%. If you can't communicate, it's like winking at a girl in the dark, nothing happens. You have to be able to get forth your ideas. So Warren Buffett, he has one certificate hanging up in his office. He's got multiple degrees, lots of accolades. The one certificate is to do with communicating. It's public, it was a public speaking certificate that he got years ago. And he credits that one thing with everything, right? And his message to everybody, every time he gives a talk, every time he's talked to students, young people, whatever, is nail your communication skills. I believe we communicate three things, what we need, what we want, what we do. That's it. There's nothing else. If you can't communicate, let's talk about if you can. If you can communicate what you need, what you want, what you do in a great way that is interesting, relevant, gets people paying attention, wanting to know more, associating you with it, your life is so much better, right? If you cannot do with it, communicate what you need, want to do in an interesting, effective way, the bottom line is you will be stuck. You will not live your best life. It's that simple. So why do I get to talk about all this? Let me just share this with you. I get to talk about communication because I, as Nadine said, have spent decades on global TV. And I've spent decades uh, training people to be on TV and to speak at conferences and events 
and I speak and chair and moderate. So I do both sides. I do the work myself. I am known for this. And I teach people how to do this. And hmm, there is such a common thread. I was going to write down 100% here, but I thought, let's be kind <laughs> and write down 95%. 95% of the people who I have ever interviewed on TV, on stage, or trained, when I start training them, when I finish training them, it's a very different situation. But at the beginning, they do specific things that get them in trouble, right? What are these things? They don't communicate in a way that is interesting to the stakeholder that they want a yes from. I'm not their stakeholder. I am in a way, if I'm a journalist, and I need to say yes to an interview, so I'm a gatekeeper, but I'm actually the gateway for them to get to their stakeholder, to their ideal client. So if they have this wonderful opportunity of speaking with somebody on global TV, on a stage that has got the right people in the audience, and they don't say things that are interesting in a clear way that is relevant to the pain or aspiration of their ideal client and stakeholder, what a wasted opportunity and what a waste of everybody's time, to be frank, a big waste. So what's the number one foundation then? It is to know the building blocks of how to communicate brilliantly. Really important. Nobody teaches us this. Nobody anywhere, not at home, not at school, not at university, not in life. Now, I used to pretty much exclusively work with people in the C-suite, top executives, chairing, moderating, hosting, training people. And what I noticed, a couple of things happened um, in 2019 specifically, and I realized, wait a minute, these are core life skills. People across the pipeline, people across every level of every industry, everybody needs to know these things because it really has a direct impact in terms of what their life turns out to be. So I set out to do exactly this, and that's why I've created Learn Communicate, which is for everybody, founders, entrepreneurs, coaches, experts, people who want to learn how to communicate in this way, and She Strategy, which is focusing on women who want to be in a woman-only environment and women in the corporate world specifically, because women always end up more likely to be poor and much more likely to die broke. FYI, yeah, I'm talking about globally, big data. If you're an outlier, I'm really happy for you, but I look at big data and massive trends and facts. Okay, so communicate brilliantly. What is that? What is it? It's about what do I say? Yeah, what are the words? Yes, yes, all these lovely things. But it's not just about what you say and put out. It's about what you communicate to people by just existing and being. What do I mean? I want you, if you have a pen, paper, or your laptop, which you obviously do because you're watching me, write down three words that you want people to associate with you. And my guess is, you know, you are a business person. So at the core is what your business is, what your product is, what your service is. What are the three words that you want people to associate with you? So my three words, for example, would be communicate. That's one of them. Yeah. Another one would be practical because everything I do has to have a practical how do I do it application otherwise it's a waste of people's time again yeah so those are two of the words what about you write them down now I want you to ask yourself what three words do people associate with you what do I mean you might think oh how do I know that you know this when you think okay why do people come to me what are the questions they ask me what do they want help with so you've got your three words what you want to be known for in your case, your business is at the center of this. So what is it that you do, provide? You've got the three words that people associate with you. And what you want, ideally, is for those three words to match up. If they don't match, then you have a problem. Why? Because what you are communicating to people, it's their perception of you, right? That's a you're communicating something that makes them go, oh, you're the person for this thing. But it's not what you want to be selling them. I'm really simplifying here, right? If your words don't match up, you have a problem because your ideal client doesn't know about you. 
it doesn't come to you, doesn't choose you over everybody else. But it's not just that. It means that you also waste time and energy dealing with these other things, requests, types of client who aren't ideal for where you want to be now and where you want to be headed. So it's really important that your three words match. You see, you want people to come to you for what you want to be known for. You want people to come to you for what you want to be known for. That's the purpose. I call this figuring out your go-to. What are you the go-to person for or business for? What is it? It's one thing. In my world, it's all things communicate, which covers quite a few things. But it's about communicating with impact and influence. That's, that's what I do. I am the go-to person for that. Now, how can that manifest, come about? It could be people come to me because they want somebody to chair a conference and event who can communicate with impact and influence, so they trust me. It could be somebody who wants training with that. How do I communicate with impact and influence? I train them. It could be, uh, you see what I mean? So it, that one core go-to can have different ways of existing. And it's the same for you. What are you the go-to person or business for? And then how you share that, products, your whatever, you know, the thing, different options, that's a different conversation. Okay, so you want to marry your how and your what. What do I mean? It means how you communicate is one thing, the whole thing around presence, perception, impact, influence, being clear, interesting. But it drills, when you drill down to it, it's easy to, these are big words that are meaningless if we don't define them. I'm big on defining things and drilling down. So it's about what words, structure, how are you going to be when you do this? How do you choose the words that are fit for this occasion, fit for this stakeholder? How do you do that? How can you do that in an easy, stress-free, quick way? Nobody teaches us this, but I do. How can I structure this in a way that is easy and simple for me to remember? but also easy for my stakeholder to remember and to associate with me. That's really important because you want to be remembered for the right reasons. You want to be noticed, remembered, chosen for the right reasons. So it is about you marrying the how, what words, structure, how can I be when I do this, with the what, the what are you the go-to person for. Very important. If you don't have one, if, if you don't have these elements together, you lose out. It's really that simple. Do I mean that you have to nail it from the very beginning when you're first starting to think and behave like this? No, it's a, it's a journey. You progress, you get better. You are brave and scared at the same time, right? You try things out, but this is what you want to get to. Really, really important. Because you know, this is what I want you to think. Imagine somebody bumps into you, right? Somebody goes, um, you're out, you're at a cafe, this is supposed to be a coffee shop, right? <laughs> or somewhere you're sitting, having a chat and a coffee with somebody and somebody sees you and they go to the people they're with, oh, that's the person who does, and they say your go-to. That's the person you should go to for, and they say what you're going to. Do you see? That's your utopia, that's where you want to get to. So that when you, your very existence, communicates something to somebody you're the go-to person for. And it needs to be what you want to be the go-to person for, not what they think you are the go-to person for, and it takes you away from your brilliance. Cool. So we've got step one. The foundation is leaning into communicating brilliantly. Learn the building blocks of communicating with impact and influence. Two, what was it? It's about defining and drilling down. What are you the go-to person for? What is it that you're the go-to person for? And in fact, I'm gonna go back a step before share to step number two. You define what you are the go-to person for. Yes, great, but you do something else too. And this again is something that nobody I have ever interviewed when I was, I mean, look, I did this, Let's talk about the BBC program. 12 years of interviewing every head of business and government from uh, Iran to Morocco, Turkey to Sudan, where they didn't 
define what they are the go-to entity for and what's different about them. What's different? What's different about you, your business, what you do, how you operate? What's different? Are you highlighting that? Ditch highlighting. Are you putting that front and center of everything that you put out? I'll tell you what, you're not doing that. What you will be doing is you'll be starting with words and sentences that are generic, that can be applied to others. That's where you're going wrong. That's how you lose. You lose opportunity. You lose a lot more, right? You lose the whole association of what are you the go-to person for. Okay, so imagine you've nailed how do I communicate and what am I going to be communicating? What is my go-to? How are we different? Okay, what do you do next? We do this next. You share it. You share with the world. So I'll give you an example. If I uh, had the choice between going to a conference or doing a virtual thing, uh, event, or creating content even, which would I choose? And I could only choose one. I would choose to create content. Why? Because it shares, if I've nailed my communicating effectively with impact and influence, and my go-to, and my difference, it shares exactly what I do, and exactly who for, and my potential client base is out there. It's not restricted to the people in the room, right? The problem with sharing or creating content and building up your personal, so it's your personal brand, your business brand, you do it for both ideally, right? But it's okay if you want to choose one. There are huge problems with this. Some of them are, it's scary, uh, because you're putting yourself out there, right? Like, hmm, what will people think? How will they react if I try doing this? It's scary. It takes a lot of time, right? Especially if you're having to learn a new skill, a new way of doing things. And it takes time. It takes time in a different way, which is you put the content out and it doesn't, there's no magic. Magic does not exist. I'm sorry. I wish it did. But you then wait for signals. You think, hmm. Is my ideal client going to respond to this? Going to communicate with me? Going to reach out? Going to do something or not? What is, is it going to resonate with them? What's that? What's going to happen? So it's about testing things as well. There is a huge difference between doing this with a system and without. So you are looking to communicate what you know and do with impact and influence. If you don't have a system to do this, you are in huge trouble. Because anything to do with content, for those of you who have tried this, wow, how much information do you end up having to store, organize, create, collect? A lot. And it's never ending because tomorrow is another day and tomorrow is another day and tomorrow is a, and it's this big black hole that needs feeding. You don't need to do it every day, by the way. It's about defining when and where and why and who. Yes, but it doesn't matter how often you do it, you're still going to be generating a lot of chaos if you don't have a system. And what that means is that it's going to be stressful. And what that means is that you are going to give up and stop doing it just before you have a fantastic result, just before somebody brilliant reaches out to you. So the type of content, that's a different conversation. It depends on you. So the, when I work with people, I always I call it meet them where they're at. Where are you comfortable? What are you comfortable doing right now? We work on that. But we're always moving along to the next step and the next step. And in my book, there is one way of communicating and putting yourself out that is the most powerful, influential way that you have. I'll get onto that in just a minute. So this is what I want you to ask yourself. This is a litmus test, really important. You might think, oh, I've just created my fantastic go-to statement. I am the go-to person for. We are the go-to business for, right? This is the test. Can you swap your name for a competitor's name? What do I mean? I've interviewed heads of huge global organizations. Huge, right? And I've had to say to them, this is while we're recording for a global program. You know, my, I had viewership of uh, 300 million people when I did the BBC program, right? Lots of people. And I would have to say to them things like, I would, I would actually say this, I'd say, 
if I put your competitor's name against that answer, it would still be valid. And they were like, what? You know, what do you mean? If I, and that's the point, if I can remove their name, your name, and the information you're putting out still is applicable with a competitor's name against it, you're saying the wrong thing. You're not drilling down to what is different and unique about you. So think about that, that's your test. Can I put my competitor's name down? Can they say these words and would it still apply? That's your test. And the way to nail this includes answering these sorts of questions. What exactly do we do? Who exactly do we serve? When exactly on their journey, their transition, do they come to us? What exact pain are they in? And what exactly is it about us that makes them want to come to us, that makes us brilliant at what we do, that makes us the choice? These are the, it might be painful for you to do, but this is really important. This is you building on a solid foundation. Now, what is that optimal wow way of communicating what you do, what you know? I'll tell you what it is. It's being on video. Being on video is powerful. Look, people can copy what you say. If you write things, if you, people can copy that. And I'm sure you've seen this happen, right? But when you are on video, nobody can copy you. Nobody's you. So they can't copy how you are, how you think, what your vibe is, what you feel like. You know, I had, yesterday I had a client, I, I had a, yesterday somebody became a client and this person said, that they really like the way I do some things, but they said they really like my vibe as well, right? So they are familiar with me through the work that I do. They trust me because I'm associated with certain things, but they like the feeling they get off of me when they are exposed to me, my knowledge, how I do things, how I think. That's what I want for you. So what happens then is, aha, you transition from spending on marketing, from guessing, have I got the client? Did we get enough leads this week? How many people are in it? You know, how many paying clients do we have this week, next month? You move on from that. You transition to, I put this in because that's what it feels like to me. You're chasing, you're chasing somebody who is a lead, who could be a client. And let's be honest, have you felt like this or have you done it <laughs> where it's like, okay, leave me alone now. Stop calling me. Stop sending me the emails. Just leave me alone. That's your leads. That's how they feel. If you bombard them, if it's cold outreach, cold emails, or just constant, here I am, here I am, right? There's a difference between that and between the right client knowing about you and actually selecting you. That's huge, huge. Because you see, having the right client does so many things for you. Some people, especially when we're starting out a business, what happens is that people think, ah, oh, I need clients, I need X amount of clients, it's really important. Yes, of course you need X amount of clients to pay your bills. However, if you have the wrong client for you, you are in trouble because managing people who are the wrong clients for you takes a lot of stress and time. And it can damage your reputation because they are the kinds of people who might say, that person's no good because they, you're not a good fit. So it's about really being careful about who you take on as a client. You want to build with the right clients. And the ultimate way for this to happen is for the right client to select you. They pre-select themselves. Wow, imagine that. And it does happen. I mean, this is how I function. So you've got the right client. And how can you do this effectively? You know that I, I'm a big believer in video. And by the way, if you do any research around video, the power of video, the stats are huge. I wasn't going to start putting the stats here, but you know, it is just off the charts The in terms of what people do. They watch video, number one, right? Uh, in terms of what you can do with good video. And I don't mean be entertaining and educational and all these, you know, be really specific. I mean, literally starting out by just sharing who you are, what you know, what you do, but with the foundation building blocks, the communicating brilliantly with impact and influence, defining your difference and what your go-to is. And then the three C's kick in. What are they? 
we have to be comfortable, credible, and consistent. It is so important. Comfortable. Okay, I'm going to contradict myself now. You have to be comfortable to start because otherwise you won't start, yeah? But then you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because this is a growth journey where you are doing something now in this way and then you want to do the next big thing the next, next and you want to grow and develop and be the go-to and the best person, ideally on video, for the job and to actually be the number one choice for your client. And you know what the best thing is? If you are the only choice, because they go, that's the person for me, right? Different ball game. So being comfortable includes, are you comfortable with what you're doing and how you're doing it? When I work with people, it, I, I call this, meet yourself where you're at, work with what you've got. You are comfortable writing, let's start with that. Meet yourself where you're at, don't beat yourself up. Work with what you've got. Then the transition into speaking, transition into other things and ultimately being really fantastic on video. Credible. If you are not credible, you shouldn't be doing any, you, you can't be in business. You know, cred, being credible is about delivering, knowing your stuff, having a great reputation. You are credible, right? And I find so many people, they don't feel credible. Right? They know brilliant things, they are brilliant, but they don't feel credible. Who's going to listen to me? Who's going to want to know what I think? Are you kidding me? That's a whole different ball game um, to overcome and, and nail. And you know what the most important thing is? Being consistent. Right. Consistent. One word, many things. What do I mean? You are consistent in the way that you show up what you're saying, what your go-to is. I'll give you an example. Imagine one day I said, oh, I'm the go-to person for this. And then another day I'm doing something totally different. And I'm saying I'm go-to for that. So it's confusing. You need to be really specific, stay on message and put the stuff that's at the core, at the core of everything that you say and do. And I don't mean say the same words every time you communicate. That's not what I mean. So it's about being consistent in what people associate you with. Oh yeah, that's the person for consistent. Be consistent in wanting to be the go-to person for it. I'll give you an example. Uh, some of the most painful situations I would be in when I was a broadcast journalist would be that there's a big story, uh, a fantastic opportunity for somebody who's an expert to go on the global, you know, we're talking again, 300 million viewers. And we didn't always get a yes. It was so painful because we had to fill the slot. We had to find the right people, the credible people. And they would say no. Lots of reasons that go into this, but let's talk about saying no because they're scared, unsure, insecure, don't feel credible, comfortable being interviewed. If you say no to an opportunity to showcase your brilliance, to raise your profile, well, two things happen. Actually, three things happen. One is uh, you don't progress. You, get, you stay stuck. Two, people don't know you for that thing that you want to be known for. You've lost out on that. And three, you don't get the opportunity again because people stop asking. I used to have a little list of people not to ask anymore, right? Because, yeah, why would you? So it's really important to be consistent in how you show up, i.e. you show up. And what you're saying and what you're the go-to for, yes. But it's also really important to be consistent in putting your expertise and knowledge out. And you don't need anybody's permission for this. I call this permission-free raising your profile, right? So an example would be your LinkedIn activity, your anything activity. Do you have a newsletter? Do you have a community? How do you show up? Are you consistent? Doesn't have to be every day but it needs to be a rhythm, a consistent rhythm so that people get to know, oh yeah, you, I can expect to hear from you or to find something from you every Tuesday at three. And they know where you're going to pop up. And so it's partly about experimenting and figuring out where your ideal clients are and what resonates fine, but it's about being consistent. Even when you feel scared, you feel like rubbish. Even when you think it is a rubbish thing that you're putting out, it's not your best thing, you put it out. You have to be consistent 
in, in when and how you show up, really important. And you'd be amazed at what people pick up on. So you might think that was rubbish and you might get a client from it. You just don't know, right? So to summarize, so we have time for Q and A. You want to be consistent, just going over that. Back to the beginning. The foundation is communicating with impact and influence. That will affect every aspect of your life, every day of your life. The second step is drill down and define. What's different about you? How you do things, how you think, what you're the expert, your life experience, bringing it together. What's different about you? You are not the only person in your space. What's different about you? What are you the go-to person or company for? That is at the center of everything that you put out. And I don't mean that you repeat the same words over and over again. That's not what I mean. And what's the third thing? You share. You share what you know and do. And one day, you will be a person of influence because people will go, that's the person for this. Oh, yeah, this person does that. And one day, you become the only choice for the right client for you. The only choice for the right client for you. That is your ultimate goal, okay? There is no magic. No amount of marketing spend will make this happen for you, which is the person of influence and the only choice. So go back to the beginning. What was that very first thing? The very first question was, imagine your ideal client believes that you are the solution to their problem. How easy would it be for you to make money? Imagine your ideal client thinks of you, knows that you are their solution. How easy would it be for you to make money? Right. At the very end, I will share this with you. I have, um, this is my website. Yay. And by the way, uh, just a couple of tips. When you want people to take action, make it really simple for them. So I would like the action for you to take. Uh, to be, if you are interested in this, if you, can you see um, my website on the screen, yeah? I'm just going to make sure that I've got the right thing up. Hold on. If you want to know how to do this in a stress-free way that it is built on systems, practical, can-do, toolbox, that gets you doing it, being it, and molds you into this next you, get in touch. I've, as of today, I've opened up my diary for two weeks, that's it, to take calls from you and people that you know, you know, whoever comes from this um, session, book a strategy call with me. Of course, I would love to work with you because I love doing this. I love, I love working with people who are brave, people who take ownership of their life. Right? And I find founders, entrepreneurs, experts to be that kind of person, my kind of person. So book a strategy call. Even if you don't want to work with me, you will get something out of the call. I've got, um, book, you click on the thing and it takes you and you can book it. And you get there by going to my website, finding nemacom Very simple. I'm a very simple person who is all about being practical, being real and getting results. Right, I'm handing over to you, Nadine. And <laughs> that was fantastic. That was extremely insightful, I must say, while being very entertain entertaining. <laughs> You're quite vibrant, I must say. And this is one thing that actually captivated me about you during our first intro call. Um, Nima, I really want to thank you. Um, I've moderated, sat on, uh, hosted many sessions, many speaker. And I must say for a subject that, as mentioned earlier, is at the top of the pyramid of challenges for many entrepreneurs, you made it sound like the solution is so simple. And to tell you the truth, I have taken notes, which I haven't done in a while. 
I will personally implement some of your tips. Your, your, uh, your toolkit is awesome because it makes sense. And it's always impactful when you listen to a speaker or a facilitator or a professional deliver tools that actually make sense. It's something practical. It's something real. It's around you. It's palpable. It's experienced on a daily basis. And it continues to be an ongoing struggle for a lot of people. However, the solution is there. All we need to do is put these pieces together after really thinking about what we really want to do, what we really want uh, our, our outcome to be out of this, um, creating a strategy. I'm all about strategies and organizing everything. I absolutely love it. So thank you. Um, for those who are joining us, uh, Nima's website is included in the chat box uh, in case you didn't catch that earlier. Um, I want to open up to some questions. I hope some of you have put some of them in there. Yes, we do. So from Rebby, uh, she says, this is quite applicable, not only in terms of business, but more on a personal note. We agree, right? Because we said that whatever you're going to deliver today applies on a personal as well as a professional uh, level. And then she went on saying that, especially for women, we are conditioned to believe, to step back and give way to others. Um, yeah. So it's, it's more of a comment, not a question. Thank you, Rebi, for your comment. But do you want to add on to what Rebi mentioned? Um, yeah. Uh, so basically, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is about communicating it for the whole of life, every day with whoever. So your stakeholders include your children, your partner, your family, your friends, your colleagues, this, your client. These are all stakeholders in our life. And so it's really, really important that we embrace this idea of, oh, how can I interest the person I'm communicating with so that they pay attention and get and care about what it is I want to communicate to them? It's a skill, but it's a skill that can be learned and it changes the whole of your life because it changes the way you think, right? So you're right. Um, I hope you've got the website up now. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add on that for Christelle, who's asking about the website. It's actually at the icon next to the Q&A. So it's in the chat box. We've put all the links there for your uh, referral. Uh, there's a question from Arsalna, and she asks, could you elaborate on being consistent from the three Cs? Okay, so specific examples include, uh, say you decided, yes, I'm going to create, I'm going to take ownership of my brand space, uh, share how I share knowledge and what I do. And I create a specific type of content. I am not talking about hiring a content manager or somebody who just churns out content. That's a waste. That's marketing spend again. That's how I see it. It's about going back to the basics of everything I've just mentioned, which is the bare bones. And um, how do you, what are you going to do? Why? How do you do it? Okay. So setting up the systems all around that. Being consistent means that you don't stop. Magic doesn't exist. What do I mean? I mean like, ah, three weeks, three months. So what? You keep doing it. If your life and the business that you want to build and the life that you want to build is important to you, you will never stop. That's the thing. Because what you share will evolve and it'll just happen naturally, right? But it's about the most, it's like being really unfit. When you're really unfit and you want to go to the gym, it's very difficult because you're having to change so many things. Your mindset, the pain that you go through, the people, whatever. But when you're already kind of fit, half fit, and you want to up it, it's not as challenging as somebody who is at ground zero and starting. So my point there is that be consistent because you want to get to beyond that beginner pain and into middle and above. That's one thing. The other thing I'll just say briefly is it's about being consistent in saying yes to opportunity. The people that I stopped interviewing, I stopped interviewing them or even not even, I stopped considering them, right? Because they said no. And they said no maybe once or more than once, depending on the situation. I know people who have turned down the opportunity to speak at an event because they were really scared and they passed on the opportunity to somebody else who said yes. Those people are most likely kicking themselves because they've seen what happens as a result because people go, ah, oh, I saw you up there, 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 speaking. Can you speak for us? So if you want to be known for a specific thing, you need to be consistent by saying yes to the opportunities, the right opportunities. But the foundation is 
believe in yourself. You've come this far. Do the next thing. Do your content. Share what you know and do. Yeah. And the last thing is always make sure that your go to and your difference is at the core. So to your point, Nadine, thank you for taking notes. All of us, we are human, right? And it really helps to have somebody else's perspective. When we work with ourselves on ourselves, you can be blind to certain things, right? And I believe in really simplifying and making things simple and easy, not complicated. Simplify, make it easy so that you can keep doing it and be consistent. I hope that answers your question. Agreed. Just one more comment, Sushma. Uh, the chat box is disabled. Our organization disables it at the council. However, as mentioned earlier, you will find the link to the website for NEMA in the actual Q&A section. So if you click on Q&A, you'll find uh, um, the DBWC uh, social media handles. And after that, there is NEMA's link to the website. Do we have any additional questions from the audience? Anybody needs to ask Nima something? This is your last chance. So can I share an example then? If people are still thinking if they want to ask, may I? We've got three minutes to go. Please go ahead, go ahead. Um, I want to share an example of two people who, I'm, who came to me, right, I'm working with. One of them started a business at the beginning of this year, so now it's six months. Uh, she told nobody, uh, in fact, we have our first session tomorrow, tomorrow's Thursday, right? So tomorrow, because she is doing an amazing thing. It is global. It is fantastic. Yay. Nobody knows about it. And she needs clients, funders, regulate. She needs a lot of stakeholders to know so that she can progress and deliver. If she had been doing this from the day that she started the business and building it, she'd be in a very different situation right now because she'd have the right people in her circle. It's not about giving away all her secrets. It's about being known for what she's doing and getting the interest of the right people. So that's one person. The other person, he has been building a business for two years. Two years. Nobody knows. He has his soft launch this month, June, and then he's going to do a hard launch in a couple of weeks if, they, if, everything, if the tech all works. Now, if I was to tell you that for the him especially, his business is based on a subscription model. He is going to tell people in the world when his hard launch happens by a lot of marketing and ad spend. Okay. This is a subscription model. Who do you think is a client who's going to want to keep subscribing? Is it somebody who lands on his business and goes, oh, I'll try that out. I don't know anything about it or why it's important. Or is it somebody who has been on the journey of like, oh, this is why he's doing this. This is really cool. I want to be part of this. I want to learn and be doing this. Who is the better client? Who's going to be subscribing month after month? It's the second warmer lead than he would, that he would have gotten if he had started sharing two years ago. Instead of now, it's like, ah, let's start. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So I think some examples bring to life what it is, what this means for you, yeah? And today, today I had a, somebody who said, she heard about the examples and then she went, Oh, yeah, so I'll start doing this when I have finished that. Wrong. <laughs> you start. Many, many entrepreneurs say that, by the way. Yes, exactly. And that's why I'm, I'm showing these examples, because we might see how it is not logical for them to do this. But when it comes to us and our business and our life, we still do it. Partly because we don't feel comfortable. We don't feel credible. Right. So to be consistent and for people to know you for that specific thing, you need to start and start doing it in the right way. Otherwise, you are actually disabling yourself. 100%. Agreed. Well, I guess we don't have any more questions, Nima. And that's a good sign, meaning everything was very clear. Um, your uh, link to the website has already been shared with the audience. Please reach out to Nima if you have any questions, if you'd like to work with her. Um, I want to thank you again on behalf of the Dubai Business Women Council and on behalf of the audience based here in Dubai. Uh, first of all, I wish that the pleasant weather in the UK stays for a while. <laughs> and uh, thank you for your support. It means a lot to us. Thank you for sharing your expertise and your time. I look forward to physically hosting you here in Dubai one day, I hope. Yeah, yeah. And just make sure it's not too hot so you can enjoy the rest of the uh, beautiful things that you can explore in this magical city. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you again, Nima. Have a great day. 
and um, good luck. Thank you for everything. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. See you online. <laughs>